It's that time of year again, and I've noticed that we've had a proliferation of these battery-powered LED strings. They are really convenient, there's no need to overload your sockets with even more plugs, but after using up an entire 12-pack of batteries, I decided to do a bit of hacking. The construction of these lights is pretty simple. We can pop off the little plastic cover with a bit of brute force, and can see it's simply a battery, a switch, a resistor, and a bunch of LEDs in parallel. In this particular version, the resistor is green, red, gold, which gives us 5.2 ohms. Measuring the voltage drop across the resistor, we get around 670 millivolts, so that's just under 130 milliamps. Given we have 60 LEDs in parallel on the string, that's around 2 milliamps per LED. Now AA batteries typically have around 2500 milliamp hours capacity, so we're looking at around 20 hours total lifetime. If we take a look under the microscope, we can see just how simple the construction actually is. The surface mount LEDs are simply soldered across the two wires and then surrounded by a blob of transparent goo. Now, a really quick hack would be to just replace this resistor with a higher value. The LEDs will light up with just a tiny amount of current, and these lights don't need to be particularly bright. So we could easily put a much higher resistor in and increase the battery life considerably. An even better hack would be to get rid of the disposable batteries completely and make the lights rechargeable. So over the past year or so, I've managed to collect a couple of these lithium cells off the street. We've covered this in a previous video. If you're willing to get your hands dirty, you can score some pretty good results. I've also got a bunch of cells that I purchased for some projects. They don't have a huge capacity. The ones I collected off the street only have around 500 milliamp power, and that's similar to the ones I purchased. But with the increased resistance, we can probably still get a similar amount of runtime to the AA batteries. I do have a bunch of boards that I ordered previously for a project from PCBWay, who by the way, sponsor the channel. They are really nice, and I love the red coloured solder mask. Check out the link to PCBWay in the description. These boards have a charge control chip, a low dropout regulator, and a low battery indicator. My plan is to use them to replace the batteries in my trackpad, but they could be used for this project as well. But in the end, I have decided that I'll save these for future, as they are quite overkill for this particular hack. We don't need the low battery indicator or the voltage regulator for this particular use case. So instead, to handle the charging, I've got these nice cheap little charging boards. These are as cheap as chips, if you'll pardon the pun, and you can pick these up for next to nothing on Amazon. They are really handy, as they have both the charge control chip and the battery protection chip built in. I've added a link in the description. It is important to note that not all charging boards do include this protection, so if you're using a different board or you want to use the salvage cells directly, you should add protection. It doesn't take much effort and it's good to have peace of mind. I've covered this in another previous video. The boards I have use the TP4056 charge controller and have a 1.2k programming resistor. This means they will charge at a maximum current of 1 amp. The battery protection I see is the standard DW01 connected to a dual MOSFET. Hooking things up is really straightforward. We just connect the lithium battery to the battery terminals. The easiest way to do this is to flow some solder onto the terminals and then reflow the tinned leads onto the pads. The two output terminals can be connected directly to the original battery terminals in the box. It's pretty easy at this point to add in an extra resistor. I'm using a 20 ohm resistor, which will take our total value up to just over 25 ohms. Using our previous voltage drop, we'll now just be drawing 26 milliamps, which means each LED will be getting about 0.44 milliamps. Our battery life, if we have a 500 milliamp hour capacity, should still be around 20 hours or so, so we're not really losing anything. For charging, we could just open the box up and plug in a USB cable, but I've got a bunch of these wireless charging coils from a previous project, so I thought it might be fun to try and make these charge wirelessly. We have covered wireless charging in depth in the various wireless LED videos, so check those out if you're interested. It's a pretty fun technology, and it's surprisingly easy to build your own version. Initially, I was looking at these very small PCB-based wireless charging modules, but then I realised the maximum current these can output was 40 milliamps. This would take way too long to charge. We'd be there for hours. So I've opted for these slightly beefier versions that should give us a quicker charge time. The stated max current output from these should be around 1 amp, so in theory we should get quite a decent charge time. However, after a bit of checking on the reviews of the coils, I have started to have some doubts about how well these would actually work. There are a few people saying that at 5 volts the output current is actually quite low, so I thought I'd better check. 
I've hooked up my electronic load and let's see what we get. Powering the transmitter at 5 volts is indeed pretty disappointing. We do start off nicely with 5 volts being received, but as we increase the load current, it quickly collapses, and we can only get around 160 milliamps before the voltage completely disappears. The listing does say the transmit board can be powered from 12 volts, so let's give that a go. Now this does seem to perform a lot better, we can get up to 0.8 amps before the voltage drops below 4.2 amps. The PCBs do start to get slightly warm though, so I'm not sure I really want to be using this in anger. I also have these 2 amp receivers that are very beefy, so let's see if these work. The coils seem much better insulated and the circuitry is a bit different. With these I did manage to get around 300 milliamps on 5 volts before the voltage collapsed. Trying them on a 12 volt supply worked a lot better and I was able to get up to 1.8 amps, but then my power supply current limited and shut down. Unfortunately at this point the wireless charging PCB also died and it no longer works. There's a dead short across the inputs, so something is really broken. What's even worse is during my experiments I managed to blow up one of the charging boards as well. Sometimes you just have to accept that the gods are against you. So I think for now we'll stick to charging over USB and leave the wireless charging for future investigation. Everything does fit nicely in the original box. I will probably cut a hole for the USB socket. And the box is transparent so we can see the charging LED quite easily. All in all it's a nice little hack.